Hi, this is Amy Romeo from the jewelry making and craft blog, amyromeo.com. And on this channel, I like to share fun and easy jewelry making and craft projects. Today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make these really pretty 3D flower earrings using the process of sublimation. If you have your own sublimation printer, I have the designs ready to go for you. They're free on my blog. I can't wait to show you this project from start to finish. So why don't we go ahead, let's hop right in and get started. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using today to make these really pretty 3D flower sublimation earrings. So I'll be showing you where to get the designs for these projects in just a minute, but first we'll start with the earring blanks. And these blanks are sublimation blanks. They're MDF on the inside, and then they have a white sublimation coating, usually on both sides, which means you can sublimate on the front and the back. This is a fun package because there's all different kinds of shapes in here, but you can also buy full bulk bags just with one shape, like circles or these bars. It's really up to you. A lot of times these blank packages will also come with the earring hardware that you need, which is nice. They're usually this sort of stainless steel finish. So if you wanted a brighter metal finish, which I prefer, then I'm just going to use my own six millimeter jump rings and also some regular shepherd's hooks in that brighter metal finish, but it's personal preference. We'll need a heating element to press the designs onto the blanks. So I'll be using a Cricut Easy Press. This is the nine by nine. You could also use an Easy Press Mini or you could use a larger heat press. For any of these heating elements, I like to press earring blanks at 385 to 400 degrees for about 60 seconds. If you're using the Easy Press Mini, you'll only be able to press one earring at a time. If you're using the larger Easy Press or a bigger heat press, then you can press many earrings at once. So that's the benefit of using a larger heat press. I'll be using a heat pressing pad and then also some parchment paper and some Teflon sheet to protect my surfaces. I'll use some heat resistant tape. This is the blue, the Cricut brand, that you can use any heat resistant tape you prefer. And then I'll be using some jewelry making pliers. These are flat nose pliers to attach the earring hooks. Some tweezers to help me remove the tape after we've pressed. And then also a weeding tool like the pin pen or the weeding hook. And this is going to help us peel off the clear plastic coating that's on the sublimation blanks that we need to remove before we can sublimate onto them. I have some craft scissors. And then for safety, I have some heat resistant gloves, which are important because these little earring pieces can be very hot after they're pressed. And you'll also wanna make sure you're in a well ventilated area because the process of sublimation does give off some fumes. So I'm going to show you first how to press just the front of the earring if you wanted to make a one-sided earring. But the nice thing about these double-sided blanks is you can press on the back as well. So to press on the back, I like to just use the Cricut infusible ink. It, they come in solid colors or prints and patterns. It's just an easy way to make a nice solid color finish on the back of the earring. So first we'll do a front only earring and then I'll show you how to press both the front and the back at the same time because that's something I get a lot of questions about. So finally, if you want to use the artwork that I've created for this project, I've created eight different earring sized 3D sublimation flower designs for you. And these are free on my blog. So if you visit amyromeo.com slash design202, you can enter your name and your email address and I will send these over to you right away as PDFs. And then you can print them from the sublimation printer that you have and you can follow along with me with this project. So the reason I've made these is there are so many really pretty sublimation flower designs already out there like on Creative Fabrica, Jennifer Maker did an amazing tutorial not too long ago with several of her own beautiful floral patterns. I'll leave a link to that for you if you want to grab her patterns too. They're amazing, but they're not scaled for earrings. So I wanted to scale down some patterns for earrings and also mirror them because I like it when the earrings are symmetrical. So th what's special about my patterns is they're scaled for earrings and they're also mirrored. And I'll show you exactly how to use these in the next step. So let's go ahead and get started. So before I start making the earrings, I wanted to show you a few things that I did in advance to prepare my area. So I have my Easy Press already preheated at 385 degrees and it's set to 60 seconds. So I have that preheated ready to go. I've cut a piece of parchment paper 
to the size of my heat pressing pad and that's to help protect my surface. I've trimmed some pieces of the sublimation tape. I've basically cut about maybe two inch pieces and then I've cut them in half and I've sort of stuck them here so they're handy and nearby so I'm able to grab them easily. I've also trimmed out the design that I want to use from the PDF that I printed from using my sublimation printer. So I have this handy and ready to go. So the most important step we need to do first is to remove the clear coating that's on these blanks to keep them from getting scratched. Sometimes the coating is blue, sometimes it's clear like this one is, and you might not be able to see it, but I assure you it's there. So I like to use the pin pen weeding tool because it has a little more of a fine point. And I like to start picking very carefully right above the earring hole. Generally, I find that's the easiest part to lift up. And then you might be able to see the little part of the clear cover is starting to peel up and then you can just peel it off. It's like a sticker. You want to be careful not to scratch your blank when you're doing this process. And then you'll turn it over and you'll repeat on the other side. Once you've peeled the coating off of both sides of your earring blanks, then those are ready to go. And the first thing that we want to do is determine what part of this design do we want to be featured on the center part of our earring blank. So I think I want to use this very large flower here. And what I want to do is figure out where's my blank going to go. So it's inside the boundary. We don't want any of the white space underneath our blank. We want the blank only to be on ink so that it will receive the full pattern of color. So let's say I want to do that there. Then what I'll need to do is match up where this blank is going to go on the other side so we get a nice symmetrical earring. And then I wanted to point out that I did leave lots of room around here and I put the two different designs sort of up to each other so you can maximize the additional space around here for other earrings. So for example, I could use one of these shapes and create another sublimation earring from this same pattern. And there's also an opportunity over here to create yet another earring. So make sure you're taking advantage of the entire pattern. So once I've decided where this is going to go, I wanna make a note and I'm going to carefully trim just trimming around the blank pretty close to the edge and that way I can use more of this print for other projects. Once I have that, I'm just going to use my little pieces of tape and I'm going to tape on this side and also tape on this side going across the back. There we go. So this will be the front of our earring. This has the sublimation print facing the blank. And now I'll just repeat on this side. So once I have the first one taped up and ready to go, I wanna repeat that process with the other earring and I do want these to be symmetrical. So I'm going to see where I cut on this side and I'm gonna try and place this one on the same spot. And again, I will trim pretty close to the edge. Be sure to leave a little bit of overlap. And that way you have plenty more of your pretty floral pattern to make with other earrings. This piece actually goes all the way around, so that's perfect. Now I'm going to put both of these earring blanks with the sublimation paper on top on my surface. I'll protect with either a piece of parchment paper or my Teflon sheet. And then I'm just going to place the Easy Press on top and let it go for 60 seconds. So the time is up. I'm going to carefully remove my Easy Press and set it on the side. And I'm just going to let this cool down for a moment. If I wanted to touch it right away, I would need to put on my heat resistant gloves. What I'm doing now is just removing the little sticker, the clear cover sheet off of both sides of the second pair of earrings that I want to show you. And I've also trimmed up the art that I want to use for these earrings. So let me set that aside and I'm going to carefully flip these over.
Now what I want to do is just remove the tape that's keeping this little transfer onto the blank. And there you have it, isn't that pretty? Peel off the tape and just set that aside to cool. It's important when you're using the Easy Press not to move it. So I just placed it down. You don't need to press and hold, it just needs to sit there. If you're using an Easy Press Mini, it's very important that you don't move it because you can get some ghosting of the pattern. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the same design. This one was made without moving the Easy Press. And this one, I moved the Easy Press on purpose so that you can see it's sort of a, a shaky pattern. It's not as clear as this one. So it's really important once you put that heating element on not to move it. So for the second set of earrings, I'm gonna show you how I press something on the back, a color on the back, and also the sublimation design on the front at the same time. And it's all about how this is taped together. So this is just a piece of the Cricut Infusible Ink. This is a pink color called Rose Pink, and I've just trimmed a little piece down to size. And the first thing I'm going to do is tape this onto my blank. So my blank, again, does not have the clear coating on either side. And I'm just going to trim this piece of infusible ink so it's a lot smaller and closer to the size of the blank. So what I'm particularly interested in is getting the edges almost, the edge of the blank almost to the edge of my trimmed infusible ink because that's where we're going to tape. There we go. Now on this side, we're going to have our pattern. So let me figure out where that is going to go. Let's see. Maybe kind of there, okay. And again, we're going to trim very close to the blank, especially on the sides. Okay. You trim a little closer on this side. What we're going to do is sandwich this blank using tape in between our two layers of sublimation paper and infusible ink. And we need to do this carefully so that the blank does not shift inside of our little sandwich. So I have my top design pressed on the blank. I'm going to place the back design, which is just that solid infusible ink on the back. And then using my little pieces of tape, I'm going to very tightly tape this up right around the edge. See that there? You don't wanna give yourself a lot of overlap here. You want just enough to make sure that the ink will cover the entire blank, but you wanna have this very close on the edge. And again, we'll tape it up. And I'm going to tape on the bottom too, just because we don't want these designs to shift and move. I'll do one more up here. There we go. I'm gonna repeat that with the other blank. Now that I have both of my blanks very securely sandwiched in between my piece of infusible ink for the back and also my design for the front, I'm gonna place both of these on my parchment paper with the infusible ink side up. It doesn't really matter which side you press first, but I'm gonna do this side first and I'm actually not going to use this Teflon sheet right now because I noticed that the blanks I just did are a little bit lighter in color and vibrancy than this one. So I'm going to press with a little piece of parchment paper instead because it's not as thick. So I'll just cover those up and again, place this down, try not to move it and begin. When the pressing is finished, I'll just move this aside and then I'm going to very carefully just flop these over. Again, if you want to pick these up or handle them in any way, make sure you're wearing heat resistant gloves. I'll replace my parchment paper and repeat the press. So the pressing for the second side is finished. I'll move that to the side and I'm just going to let this cool for a moment 
while I go ahead and put the earring hooks on the first pair that we made. So I have my shepherd hooks, as I mentioned, I've already turned the bottom loop to face forward. I've turned it 90 degrees and this is going to make our earrings hang straight. If you want more information about why I do this or to see this process in detail, I have a video that I'll link to for you so you can check that out. But I've already turned my hooks facing forward and I have my six millimeter jump rings ready to go. I'm just going to use two pair of flat nose pliers, open up the jump rings, I'll slide on the earring blank, then attach the earring hook, and just close that jump ring right back up. Isn't that pretty? I did want to show you, if you used the findings that came with this particular assortment of blanks, this is what it looks like. And it has the shepherd's earring hook, and then it has this piece that it's a pinch bail, and this is going to pinch onto the hole. So let me just show you how to use that real quick. So it's sort of pinched closed. We need to open it a little bit so that we can put our earring hook, we can put our earring finding on. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers and just sort of get in here and spread that open a little bit. Let me see if you can see that. See how the jaws are open on that pinch bail? And then all we need to do is set our earring piece in between the points of the bail and I can actually just pinch this close with my fingers. That's why it's called a pinch bail. And then that's how that looks. Okay. So these have cooled a little bit. Let me use my scissors. If I wanted to do this sooner, I would need to put my gloves on. So I'm just cutting open sort of that little sandwich and then you can see the front of the earring, isn't, isn't that beautiful? I think the colors are a little more vibrant because I didn't use the thicker Teflon sheet in between the heat press, but you can experiment with that. And then there's the back, just a nice pretty sort of corally pink. I think those are so pretty. And can you see how the pattern is symmetrical? The white flower here is also here. I love making earrings that are symmetrical. They just look more finished and professional. So I think our 3D flower sublimation earrings came out so pretty. And what's great about using these specially sized and scaled designs that I've created for you is you can see a lot of the flower petal and a lot of that 3D flower detail on these smaller earring blanks. So remember, I've created eight different versions for you of these pretty 3D flower earring designs for sublimation. These are free on my blog. Just visit amyromeo.com slash design202. Let me know what email address you'd like me to send these to and I'll send them over to you instantly. These will be PDFs and you'll print them out using your sublimation printer, using sublimation ink and also sublimation paper. And then you'll be able to start creating these beautiful 3D flower earrings yourself. If you like this video, I have lots of earring tutorials, jewelry making tutorials, for Cricut crafters and sublimation on my YouTube channel. I would love for you to subscribe and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.